it's safe from Upgrade Your Home DIY. And when you want to add a metal electrical box to a finished wall, I suggest you attach it to a stud if possible. I've done this many times in our home to add outlets where I want them to be, including this one that I added so we can plug in the lighted garland that goes on the railing at Christmas time. In this video, I'm going to share my tips for positioning the box, cutting the drywall, and attaching the box to the stud. The first thing you need to do is to figure out where this box needs to be positioned. If you are adding an outlet in a room that has other outlets, you obviously want it positioned at the same height from the floor. So the first thing you want to do is to make sure that you plug a tester into an existing outlet. Then turn the breaker off. You never want to take the faceplate off or look at a box without the power being turned off first. Then remove the cover plate and measure the distance from the floor to the bottom of the box. You need to make sure you're measuring it to the box, not just to where the outlet is. Now that you have that measurement, the next thing you need to do is to find a stud in the wall. Use a stud finder to find where the stud is in the wall that you're going to attach the electrical box to. I like using this type of stud finder because what it does is it shows me where the stud is and it has these multiple lights that show you where the full width of the stud is. So I know that the edge of the stud is about here. Now that I know approximately where it is, I can measure the distance up from the floor that we measured before. So that was 13 and a quarter inches. So you can measure that up and that's going to be about here. Mark that on the wall and now find the edge of my stud at that height. There it is. Okay, so this is approximately the bottom corner of where our box is going to be. This gives us an idea of where we need to start cutting. Next, we need to cut the hole for the box. Now that we know where the bottom corner is approximately, I'm going to start cutting diagonally from where the cavity is towards the stud. And I'm going to start about an inch away from where I believe the stud to be. And I'm going to use a jab saw. I'm not going to use a power saw because we don't know what's behind this finished wall. We could cut into a water line, a drain pipe, and another electrical cord, something we don't know is even there. So I'm going to start cutting towards that where I believe the stud to be with my jab saw carefully. And when I get to the actual stud, when I feel that I've got to the stud, which is right there, I'm going to stop. Now I know exactly where the bottom corner of the box needs to be. Now I'm going to trace the outline of the box. So I know where the bottom corner needs to be. I use a level to make sure that the box is going to be level when it is installed. Now I can go and trace the outline of the box, making sure that you also trace these ears that are at the top and the bottom of the box. Because you're going to have to cut those out as well. Okay. Now I know where I need to cut because I've got the bottom corner in the correct spot and I've traced my box all the way around. Now you can go ahead and cut all four sides. I recommend cutting the short sides and the side that is farthest away from the stud first and then cut straight along the stud. Remember to also cut the ears at the top and the bottom of the hole. Once you've cut the hole, look into the wall. Look in all directions to see, is there anything in there? Is there an HVAC pipe? Is there, are there water pipes, drain pipes? Anything that's going to potentially cause an issue when you are running cable to this box or when you're installing the box. When you go to test fit the box, you'll notice that there are these uh, sections that stick up on each side of the box. So make sure you cut a slot at the top on each side and the bottom of each side so that these can fit in. Now I can test fit the box. 
It's always better to be a little tight than too big. And looks like I need to shave a little off of this bottom side here. So just use your jab saw and carefully trim away. little tight at the bottom here. Okay. So that's a nice snug fit and Probably could use a little shaving on each of the sides here. I know this is tight to the stud. Now that the hole is cut, you can run the wire from wherever it's coming from to this hole. Make sure you've got about 12 inches of wire sticking out through the hole. Before you put the wire into the box, you'll notice that the box has these extra tabs here. These are here because when you're installing it in an unfinished wall, this allows you to butt this up against the stud and then it's the correct distance when the drywall gets attached for the outlet. But because it's already a finished wall, we need to bend these and fold them flat because they're going to cause a problem. You might think, well, I could just cut out the drywall here and fit them up against. But most often when you do that, it's hard to cut against the stud, and secondly, they often extend beyond where the face plate is going to go, and you end up with something that doesn't really look very good. So I found these adjustable uh, wrench pliers to be good to be able to just grab and flatten these tabs out on the top and the bottom. And now it's flush here. You'll also notice there are these pointed things sticking out. The idea there is that you can, when you're putting it in again in an unfinished wall, you hammer that into the stud and it sort of holds it there as you're going to go nail it or screw it in. Again, they're gonna cause a problem as they're going in because they will bump up against the stud. So I've now hammered these two points in. Now I have a flat side to go up against the stud. I'm going to put my cable in. I've opened up one of the holes here, put the cable in, but I'm not gonna tighten the cable clamp yet because I need some flexibility. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put the box into the wall and I'm going to do that angling it. So the direction of the wire, here the wire's running from the top. So I'm gonna angle it so that the box fits in. The wire is behind the drywall and then I can slide the box in. Now, if it is a little too snug, as it is here, then you can feel free to uh, use your jab saw to loosen it up a bit. It looks like the bottom, I still have a, a challenge here with the bottom. Again, it's always better to have it more snug to start with than to have it too big to start with. So I'd always much rather take some extra time to have to cut some extra off of the bottom or the top or one of the sides than to have a hole that is far too big. So keep adjusting until you can angle the box and slide it in. So when you're fitting the box in, you want to make sure it goes in. And what you want to make sure is it doesn't fall into the cavity. So that's kind of why the, the cable is here. So you know that you can sort of get it back out if it does, as you notice here, I've, I've made it, it's fallen into the cavity. So I can get it back out if that happens. But you wanna have it as a snug fit, not too tight. Now when you're putting the box in, if you're concerned about it falling through or really a good practice to hold it in the correct space is to use some needle nose pliers and hold it just beside the, the top tab here. Then as you put it in, this allows you to hold the box in place. So you want the box to be snug against the stud, 
level and you want it to be slightly behind the edge of the drywall. You don't want it sticking out beyond the drywall. And once you hold it in place there, now you can screw it into the stud. Now the length of screw you want to use is an inch to a maximum an inch and a half. You don't want anything longer because if it's longer, it's actually going to go out the other side of the stud. And because you don't know what's on that other side, you might run into some problems if you use a longer screw. So use only an inch to an inch and a half screw. So I'm holding the box in place with the needle nose pliers here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my uh, just manual screwdriver to drive this in, not a power screwdriver. You need more control because what you want to make sure is that this box goes flush against the stud. And with a power screwdriver, it tends to pull it away from the stud. So I'm making sure that I'm holding the box where I want it to be slightly behind the drywall. And when you get to the edge of the box, you might notice it'll start to twist a little bit. But as you tighten the screw, it pulls it back against that stud. So now we've got it attached. It is inset a little bit from the drywall and it's in our cavity and there's not a big you know, hole around it that we have to patch. So I've put one at the bottom at the front here. I'll then try to put a second screw in and usually what I'll want to do is see if I can find uh, one of the holes in the back at the top to do so you have one at the front one at the back one at the top one at the bottom and again the manual screwdriver is often going to be better than a power screwdriver because you have more control and now this one is nice and tight and now my box is solid in the wall. Once you've got the box solidly attached to the stud, you can go ahead and tighten the uh, cable clamp. Uh, make sure that you always have at least six inches of wire sticking out from the box because that's code. So you want to make sure you follow code and we just tighten the cable clamp, tighten it fully down so that the cable's not going to move. Okay, cable is nice and solid. And now you can go ahead and wire your outlet or your switch, whatever device you're installing in this box that you've added to a finished wall against a stud. When you're done, turn the circuit breaker back on and test the outlet or switch. To make sure you don't make one of the five most common mistakes DIYers make when wiring an outlet or switch in a metal electrical box, watch this video. As always, if you are not comfortable with electrical work, hire a qualified professional. Thanks for watching.